in this video. We're talking dodging and burning for your landscape photography. What is it? How do you do it in Luminar 3? We're gonna get into all that coming up. Hey, what's up guys and welcome into the channel where I post weekly videos on how you can improve your landscape photography through infield and post-processing tutorials as well as gear reviews. So if you're into landscape photography at all, consider subscribing to this channel. Now in this video specifically, we're looking at dodging and burning in landscape photography, a popular post-processing technique, but what is it and how do you do it? Well, I'm gonna be explaining exactly what it is, the history of it, and then how you can do it. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it using Luminar 3. If you don't have Luminar 3, you can check that out below in the video description. Now, dodging and burning has been around for a long time. There have been photographers, landscape photographers, who have used this technique all the way back to the film days. I watched a documentary one time on Ansel Adams and how he would use dodging and burning in his film photography, and I was, my mind was blown because I didn't even think you could do that with film photography. But what he would do is when he was exposing his film print and the chemicals, he would have a light over top of it and he would shadow it with paper and, and use this dodging and burning technique that would reveal sections of his photograph that he would wanted to make the light pop a little bit more or he would want to conceal and put things in shadows a little bit more. It was amazing to watch. I'll also link that below in the video description if you want to see that as well. So dodging and burning you need to think of as adjusting your exposure in very local adjustment areas or places where the light is slightly different, slightly brighter, slightly darker. What do you wanna do with those locations? If you're dodging it, you are decreasing the exposure. If you're burning it, you are increasing that exposure. So how do you think about that? Well, if you're burning something, you're creating more light in an area because you're putting fire up next to it and you're burning that object. That's how I remember what burning is. You're increasing that exposure in a specific area. Dodging, you're kind of dodging an area that may be secluded a little bit. So I think of that as shadowed area, I'm decreasing that exposure in a specific area of my photo. How do you do this exactly? Well, let's go ahead and get into Luminar 3 so we can see exactly how we can do this in your post-processing software. If you have something like Lightroom or Photoshop, the process is really similar, so you can follow along with that as well. But again, if you wanna check out Luminar 3, it's in the video description below. All right guys, now that we're in Luminar 3, we can start going through this. This was a photograph of one of my favorite hikes in Great Smoky Mountains National Park of a waterfall. This was like a rare weather event. There were huge rains the night before and we got out there and it was just like my shoes were wet and I had been crossing rivers all day and there were just epic conditions. The light was perfect. It was cloudy skies, it was dreary and you had tons of flow of water moving down. But when I opened this photo and I saw it for the first time, I noticed that there were sections of it that I wanted to bring out more or take down a little bit because there are subtle light variations in this image. Let's take a look at those. What you have here are, especially with this rock in the foreground right here that's really anchoring this image down, you have some shadows down here on the bottom and then you have like this nice little highlight on the top of the rock. Some of the flow of water too has a little bit more highlight than others. Uh, so I wanna bring that out. And then the leaves on the sides of this image, I really wanna exemplify and show the variations and subtle light contrast, highlights and shadows. I wanna show those a little bit better. So what I do with that is use dodging and burning. So what you wanna do when you're near the end of your editing process on a photo and you're nearing that completion point and you wanna bring out these last subtle changes Changes. All I've done with this image is I add the autumn colors look and then I erased a little spot that was right down here. A piece of dust on my lens that I had that showed up in this white water right here. All you have to do is go to add filters and then you're going to scroll down near the bottom and what you're going to go to is dodge and burn. 
and that's going to bring up some options for you. You have your dodging and burning amount and you also have your filter amount. Now the filter amount is just going to tell you like this is how much of this filter that you're actually going to be using. You adjust that later on once you're done with your dodge and burn. And then the amount is how much this effect actually shows up in your image. So what you want to do with this is go ahead and select start painting. I always keep these on 100 right before I start because I have a lot more variation and what I can do with the dodging and burning in the paintbrush tool, which is what we're getting into right now. So you go to start painting and you're going to have options that come up. Immediately you see your brush tool come up and then you see your lighten, darken and erase options along with size and strength. Now the lighten is your burning. This is where you're going to increase that exposure. This is where you're going to bring out highlights. Your darken is going to be your dodging tool, which is going to be little hiding areas or shadowed areas that you're going to be dialing down a little bit. And then if you mess up, you have your erase tool. Your size of your brush is pretty important because how much of this are you going to want to paint in? I like to keep mine pretty small because I want to be really exact in this effect. And then my strength is how much of this do I want to paint in? Think of it as like how opaque do you want this brush to be? Do you want it to be 50%? Do you want it to be 100%? Probably not because you don't want this to be like an in your face change. This is a very subtle adjustment. So anything from about 10 to 50% is gonna work well. I'm gonna keep mine on about 10% just to make really subtle adjustments to this. And what we have in this image is a really subtle light change on this rock that I talked about earlier. I'm just gonna start painting this in and you'll notice it'll get a little bit brighter wherever I'm painting this in. And I just wanna kinda of go down easing it into this rock and these fallen leaves down below. That's gonna be my first layer that I'm painting on this. I'm gonna go one more and only go a little bit further down into this adjustment just to make that a little bit more subtle, make that pop a little bit more and add some more interest to this. I always feel like Bob Ross when I'm explaining how to do all this painting and darkening and the dodging and burning stuff, but don't imagine me with an afro or anything like that. Next area that I want to affect are these leaves on the sides. So I'm just gonna do the same thing and just start painting this in on these leaves of these trees. Over here too, this probably looks pretty cool. We have like a little highlighted area on the side of the river going down where we have the bend in the river. And I might paint these rocks too down here a little bit too. And notice just from that, we have a little bit more contrast over on the right side and on the left side. So you're kind of bringing attention down into this valley where the river is flowing through because that's the main subject of this image. But we also want, again, to keep these adjustments subtle, realistic, and exact. So that's what we're doing here. Next, let's work on the darkening side of this. I'm gonna switch over and click darken and have all of my same options selected. My size is around 40. My strength is 10% to be subtle. And I'm just going to paint in the darker areas of this just to darken this down and create a little bit more contrast. Remember, we came down here quite a bit on the rock with the lightened part. I'm coming back up with darkening, kind of blending these two effects together on this foreground rock to make it realistic and less noticeable that I'm actually dodging and burning and creating so much contrast in this. And then I'm going to come up in the shadows on the side over here and just paint in the shadows in between these highlights on the trees. And then I'm gonna paint in some dark dodged areas that are on the trees on the side down here. And then lastly, I'm gonna kinda of come in between these highlighted areas of the river that's moving through just to make it a little bit darker of the water coming through here, maybe right here as well. And, and just darkening up the sections that I want the whites and the highlights to really pop out a little bit more and be a little bit more exemplified in this. So let's go back to lighten. So we're gonna be burning a little bit more again. I'm just gonna lighten some of these highlights on the waterfall itself coming down. I don't want them to be too bright because I wanna keep a lot of the detail that's in there. And remember to make like very vast, vague 
swaths with your paintbrush to make this a little bit less intentional and more randomized like nature would be if you were out shooting and you had some dappled highlights on your water as well. And then moving down, I'll just follow the white water going all the way down into the screen. And then just this last little bit of it right before it falls over this hard edge down into the river and creates a little bit more white water down there as well. I think that looks pretty good for dodging and burning. Again, subtle changes. Let's click the before and after and turn this filter layer on and off to see exactly what it does. Let's go to the eye icon and that will turn my dodging and burning off and then it will turn it back on and you'll see how much power this has. Here it's a little bit like muted, it's a little bit shallow in terms of contrast and color. And then when I turn this effect back on, I really bring out and boost those areas that need that extra boost of contrast, highlights and shadows to vary a little bit more. So this looks pretty good. Again, off and then back on. This is a really good effect to use anytime you have subtle changes in your highlights and your shadows and you just wanna exemplify those a little bit more and create awesome landscape photos. All right guys, so dodging and burning is really that simple. Again, if you're interested in Luminar, it's linked below in the video description for you to check out on your own time. If you're using Lightroom or Photoshop and you like how that looks, you can follow basically the same steps in your Lightroom and Photoshop software. And if you want more videos on post-processing tutorials that are gonna help you take your infield work and raise them up to the next level, go ahead and subscribe to this channel because we'll come out with way more of those in the future that you don't wanna miss. And lastly, if you wanna continue watching, that's always an option too. You can watch this playlist is going to help you with more post-processing tutorials with Luminar 3. You can also watch this video, which is just another video from this channel. Or if you want to easily subscribe, click or tap your screen somewhere in this general vicinity of this video. Thanks so much, guys. I can't wait to see you in the next video. Keep shooting.